I made it! <laughs> I'm down! Ah! All right, here we have part two. We're gonna do a run video with the RBX 10 Rift. Today we're gonna have some fun with it. We're up at a rock quarry and we're gonna do some rock bouncing. I did a build video before this. I'll put a link to that up here, but today we're gonna have some fun with it at the quarry. Stay tuned. my last video I finished gluing on the tires I also swapped out the two-speed gear set so I ran a couple packs in this just to get a feel for it and make sure that the ESC was set up properly and I ended up taking the two-speed gear set out because I have a censored motor ESC combo didn't really need it there was also a little bit of a delay for the gears to engage I just wanted it to be a little bit more smooth swap that out um, running a 2400 kV motor in this with the castle copperhead 10 ESC gonna try a couple different heavier battery options so I have a 5400 power hobby lipo this is the three cell and I also have a four cell 5200 I did a little poll on Instagram about whether I should try out 4s in this and I think we're gonna do it so I got a couple options here let's go take it up to the quarry let's go bash Whoa! <laughs> so you can't turn like super sharply, otherwise it'll do that. We do have some sway bars, which are helping us out a little bit. All right, let's send it. This is a freaking rock crawler paradise. All right, so now we're gonna try some more technical terrain. We have the center diff lock, but we're gonna get a little bit of wheel spin, you'll notice, on some of the more slower technical terrain because we don't have lock diffs, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. Yeah, it's not gonna do that stuff. It's not really geared for this type of technical terrain, going slower. Maybe if we locked out the rear and, and front diffs, you might get some better performance, but it's all about getting crazy on the hill climbs for sure with this one. <laughs>
All right, so that last little thing, my rear sway bar kind of bent. You can see the plastic's a little bit flimsy here and it keeps getting sideways. And then this little rod end just busted. Looks like it's stretched and snapped. Really easy to fix. So we're gonna go get that part and get back out here. Or see you later. All right, I had to do a little repair. So one of the rod ends kind of just like basically expanded and then snapped. So luckily I had a couple of spares from my bomber and we're good to go. They're not exactly the right fit, but close enough. So they'll get us, get us back out there. All right, this thing survived a couple runs on 3S. This is my first time trying 4S. I'm noticing now that the sway bars are a little weak and this part sort of spins a pivot. So it's been kind of bending a little bit. So I definitely want to upgrade these to metal ones in the future. Uh, but otherwise our ball end thing is holding up and let's go send it. Whoa boy. Whoa, <laughs> that's like not even that much throttle. Yeah, this is how you break your RC cars. So I'm running a 2400 kV motor, which is 200 kV over what they suggest specking this with in the RTR. So I'm gonna be a little cautious. I don't think the gears are meant to go that crazy. So <laughs> you will use the power to do some jumps, so. Oh no, we sound like we're upside down. So that is pretty much it for this video. I had a ton of fun running the rift up at the rock quarry on both 3 and 4S. Just had one minor break of a rod end the whole session, so not too bad. Super easy fix, got right back out there. It held up to some pretty high airs and a couple bad landings. So all in all, I'm super impressed with the durability. It's not great on the slower, more technical terrain because you have open front and rear diffs but it's a really nice hybrid of a basher and a rock crawler. So I think the Rift would be a really great rig for someone that's into off-road RC, but might get bored with the slower trail trucks. The Castle Copperhead 10 ESC was also really great. You could hear the ESC fan running the whole time, keeping things cool. I had the drag brake set really low so it wouldn't lock up when I let go of the throttle. The motor might be a little bit too high of a KV, so that's totally up to you, but just be aware if you're running something higher than 2400 like I was, with the higher KV that you go, you're gonna put a lot more strain on your rig, more likely to break stuff. But all in all, I really enjoyed building the kit had a couple really fun sessions out there with it. We'll definitely keep this in my regular rotation. So huge thank you to Horizon Hobby and Power Hobby and a huge, huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. I'll see you later.